this movie exists. Ah, just what we needed. A gritty, neo-realistic reboot of the fucking Disney logo. Once upon a time in the hidden heart of France. Narration. Also, France has a hidden heart. The whole country is not even the size of Texas. And Texas's heart is where the stars at night are big and bright. So that shit definitely ain't hidden. Oh, how divine. That's right, kids. There's some extra singing in this bullshit so that we can pad the runtime and sell more tracks on iTunes. Between this and The Hunger Games, I'm starting to worry about Stanley Tucci becoming typecast as that dude that wears the f***ed up wigs. Or that dude who will do anything for a paycheck. Who the hell has a door right behind the throne in the throne room? And why isn't it locked? Also, we know that there's a big-ass front door in this castle, but the Enchantress takes the side door to properly buzzkill the entire shindig. Repulsed by her haggard appearance, the prince turned the woman away. Yeah, he's a dickhead, but he's also probably pretty pissed this old lady crashed his party, demanded a room, and waved a flower in his face. When he dismissed her again, the old woman's outward appearance melted away to reveal a beautiful Enchantress. Entrapment. Also, it's already maddening that I'm watching the exact same f***ing story as the animated movie that came out 26 years ago. It's exactly like the Shot for Shot remake of Psycho in 1998. Only if a movie that featured Vince Vaughn jerking off had made over a billion dollars. And placed a powerful spell on the castle and all who lived there. The Enchantress gave the prince two f***ing chances in five minutes to not be an asshole. And because he assholed, every mother in the vicinity was screwed. For the Enchantress had erased all memory of them from the minds of the people they loved. That's an excellent attempt to close a plot hole opened by the animated movie, but it leaves me with a whole new set of questions. Did the Enchantress also erase all physical evidence of their existence, including portraits, letters, or things they've made? And I'm sure some mothers and fathers worked in the castle. Did their spouses suddenly think storks brought them their children, or they were miraculously conceived? If not, he would be doomed to remain a beast for all time. Or at least until the next reboot sequel, which should be coming out in roughly 14 months. Every day, like the one before. Harmonious Hermione. Bonjour. Bonjour. Everyone in this town opens up their window and doors at the exact same time, even though there are occupations like bakers and policemen and like that, which should be working at a much earlier hour. Bonjour. Background, public intoxication, incarceration is background. Have you lost something again? Well, I believe I have. Do I really need to point out that everyone in this movie that's set deep in France has English accents except for Le Fou and Lumiere? I guess so. The director said, here, let's have you eat an apple in this scene. It'll make you look like even more of an ass. Hey, that's an actual ass eating an apple. Holy Was this movie trolling us? Look as she goes, I'm going strange, no question. This lyric made sense when adults were singing it in the original movie, but having a bunch of kids smart shame Belle makes me think Bill Condon promised all his nieces and nephews they could totally be in his movie. No tonight, she's a funny girl that I can't tell who's a bigger dick in this situation. The girls for singing about how weird Belle is right in front of her, or Belle for almost stepping all over their clean clothes. Jesus, movie, I know you probably had a large floral budget, but this is all the flowers. Look at how the fool, my future wife. We interrupt this musical number to bring you some good old-fashioned Disney-sanctioned stalking. But ever since the war, I felt like I've been missing something. You know what the first movie was missing? More unnecessary Gaston backstory. <laughs> Even for this movie, some bull Fucking millennials. Never easy, but we try. Jesus Christ, Maurice even gets a fucking song in this version? What's next, an aria from that chick that said bonjour a few minutes ago? Maurice not only sketches his daughter obsessively, he also has a miniature model of himself painting the painting that's hanging right beside him. I think I prefer the crazy inventor that adorably fucks everything up, Maurice, from the last movie. Your mother was... fearless. God damn, this movie about a girl that's captured by a magical beast takes forever to actually beast. So, what can I bring you from the market? Belle spent all f***ing morning at the market, at which every conceivable item was available, edible or otherwise. But Maurice is hitting up yet another one in order to finally kick this plot in the ass. Teaching another girl to read isn't one enough. That's booksist. We have to do something. F***ing what? The punishment for teaching a young girl to read is to empty out all of Belle's laundry on the street? These townsfolk have gone from singing about how curious Belle is to outright public humiliation. All I wanted was to teach a child to read. Beauty and the Dangerous Minds and the Beast. The only children you should concern yourself with are your own. Movie can't decide if it wants to pad its runtime with a ton of extra songs or pad its runtime with a ton of village-centric tomfoolery. But by God, it will pad its runtime. No, sir, not me. I guarantee. 
Tear Emboldened by the success of another Emma in a recent musical, Emma Watson is perfectly fine with being just okay at singing. Hang on, if that's the village way back there, Belle just covered at least a mile on foot within two measures of the song. If the opening credits are any indication, Belle should have an excellent view of the magical kingdom from up here. You know where we are, Philippe, because I don't. Maurice goes to the same market every year. You ask for that every year. And every year you bring it. But this time, not only gets lost, he seems completely unconcerned about it. Philippe ex machina. Also, come the f on. These wolves were standing there ready for a tasty Dave to fall off the cliff, but there's a much bigger and meatier target that's apparently standing right in front of them. Since this movie suffers from the exact issue about the castle being in plain sight, I'll just repeat the same sin I gave the last movie. The beast has only been secretly beasting for 10 years, but Maurice is somehow unaware of this very nearby castle. Also, it's super weird that the villagers wouldn't be at all disturbed that the prince of the very nearby castle hasn't been seen or heard from in years. And even if this prince is habitually reclusive, you'd think that someone would know one of the 300 live-in servants and wonder where they are, right? Right? Also, in the last movie, this event occurs almost eight minutes earlier, so you see what I mean with the whole pad the runtime thing, eh? Okay, I know I'm being hard on this movie, mostly because it sucks and was completely unnecessary, but I will give it credit for looking freaking beautiful. The set design in the castle is un believable Oh, thank you. I know Maurice is supposed to be kind of an idiot, and movie does have to movie, but why the hell would Maurice think this meal is for him? Good night. Wait, wait. Roses. Promise Bella Rose. Maurice stops to get Bella a souvenir from his horrific ordeal at the castle, so they can both look at it and cry together in terror. Take me to him! This works. But what if she is the one? The one who'll break the spell? Lumiere has all three of his candles lit when it's broad daylight, but was flameless last night when Maurice came by. <laughs> Maurice's cough could have come from anywhere in the castle, but Belle goes directly to the tower where he's held. This is the best father-daughter echolocation trick since Taken 2. Now go before she finds you! Who? Maurice plays the pronoun game so that we can get a properly dramatic introduction to the beast. Punish me, not him! No, he means forever! Apparently that's what happens around here when you pick a flower! Damn, all of a sudden it's apparent that Maurice would be excellent at cinema sense. Choose Belle. I won't let you do this. <clears throat> yeah, I'll totally be fine. Just got a terrible disease that <clears throat> will disappear the minute I leave this castle. <clears throat> and forget me. Forget you. Everything I am is because of you. Bill rubs it in Maurice's face that he single-handedly made her into a moody, wanderlusting social pariah. Hello. <gasps> Beauty and the Beast franchise continues its curious tradition of giving the voice of Lumiere to anyone but a French dude. This plan of yours is dangerous. Ignoring the fact that Belle is well within earshot, what about Lumiere's plan seems dangerous? Trying to set the beast up with the one woman that's come by to the castle right before the last petal of the flower drops? Sure, he may be pissed at the beginning, but what else is Lumiere supposed to fucking do? Wait for the next one to come by? God's words! A diva needs her beauty to her. Movie thought this opera singer turned wardrobe thing wasn't weird enough, so it gave her narcolepsy. Are all these flying fabrics also sentient? If so, why do they have less individuality than the fucking dog footrest? What are the rules? No! Josh Gad chews the f out of the scene, and in this instance, it is not a good thing. I eat five dozen eggs, so I'm roughly the size of a ball. This song is a great example of why this fing movie is so stupid. The use of animation to make these preposterous claims is a million times more fun than watching Josh Gad and his invisible wires. He's got, he's got Belle. She's locked in a dungeon. Who's got her? Even in desperate situations, Maurice simply cannot stop playing the pronoun game. Crazy old Maurice. What indication has the movie given us that Maurice is crazy? He's a widower that makes pretty amazing tchotchkes and cares for his daughter. But even though the movie is over two hours, it ain't got time to explain that. She's the daughter of a common thief. I didn't think it was possible, but they actually made the beast less likable in the beginning of the first movie. Also, I'm going to go ahead and give the beast CG a perspective sin for how cheesy and dated it's going to look in 10 years. Also, why did they have to CG the beast? There are a million ways to dress Dan Stevens up to look realistic, via costumes and practical effects, but this looks like it was mostly done on Windows 98's paint program. And when she opens the door, give her a dashing debonair smile. Come, come, show me the smile. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the girl. Mirrorism. Also, thank God the beast looked in on Belle when she wasn't continuing to try and climb out the window, which for some reason she stopped doing. I grew three more feathers, and I just plucked yesterday. I know, darling. I'm getting more metallic every day. Oh, it's happening again. Gotta feel for the castle staff, but this was the worst the Enchantress could do? I mean, I guess I understand changing the prince into a beast for being a dick, but why did she turn the staff into furniture and appliances and sh even if she were trying to punish them for some bizarre reason, why aren't they also animals? How lovely to make your acquaintance. Nanny McPhee isn't Jessica Fletcher in this scene. Be our 
Guest, be our guest. Put our selves to the test. Hearing an inferior version of a classic Disney song you've heard a million times is like listening to Justin Bieber try and sing like Kurt Cobain. Don't believe me, ask the dishes. So are all the dishes also servants in the house? And if so, it would be difficult to ask them anything, because they're almost just normal dishes. The only discernible difference these dishes have to standard dishes is that they can fly in coordination to a musical number. And if these dishes actually have human souls trapped inside of them, then what happens when the spell is broken? Is the entire castle suddenly devoid of flatware in fine china? On, unfold your menu. Damn it, if only Belle spoke French. Also, who wrote this menu? Is there a character here that would be able to not only wield a pen, but perfectly print? Lumiere's cloth napkin dance is a PSA on how not to do fire safety. Ah, uh, those good old days when we were useful, A hey, Cogsworth. Bell's smile is saying, I appreciate the effort of the musical number, but I haven't eaten in days and would prefer to just have a nice hot meal in peace, and this ornate fanfare is keeping me from it. The movie strangely doubles down on the psychedelic teapot scene that was so out of place in the animated version. Pudding! <laughs> Cruelly, Lumiere offers a tiny amount of food to the woman he's been openly tempting for the entire length of a Disney World ad. Holy sh! Beast feels the need to candle the f out of some candles. What is this movie trying to tell me by showing me this? Is this a bed now? Has he been eating a deer right here and leaving the antlers? Is this a failed arts and crafts project? Mademoiselle, what are you doing? Getting out of here. Which is shockingly easy to do. Belle is easily disarmed by CGI fakery. Seriously, I guess these wolves aren't as bad as the Scorpion King or anything, but it's clear the movie blew its effects budget on that Be Our Guest showpiece. <laughs> Why is Beast so good at fighting other beasts? When the Enchantress enchanted him, it was really all just about appearances, right? So it's not like he should have Wolverine-like abilities against these wolves. The shot looks less like Beast about to faint, and more like there's a glitch in the computer. Yes, Beast just saved Belle's life, and yes, we gotta get this creepy love story started. But for reals, why the hell would she not run here? He's literally said one nice thing to her during her imprisonment, and that was under duress from his servants. Let's say Beast did just get up, walk over, and hop on top of Philippe. How is Philippe able to walk after his experience with the wolves, plus carrying a 400-ish pound beast on his back? It was downed by lightning at the time, but now it's resumed an upright position. I guess the forest also has something to gain from the curse being broken, since it's currently f***ing with Maurice, and making him look insane to Gaston and all the other townspeople. That way. Definitely that way. I am done playing this game of yours. Gaston rode all this way with Maurice, but gets fed up right before the entrance of the magical forest. You shouldn't have been in the West Wing! Well, you should learn to control your temper! <sighs> Belle's sick burn is much more painful of the beast than the wolf bites. When the master lost his mother, and his cruel father twisted him up to be just like him, we did nothing. And that is why we were all, including my young son, just asking to be cursed forever. Also, does anyone exposit out of earshot in this movie? When my life has barely begun. This number is for all the people that were clamoring for a lost childhood song to be added to the original soundtrack. What happens when the last petal falls? The master remains a beast forever, and we become... Antiques. What kind of bullshit enchanting is this bullshit? After the flower petals fall, the beast keeps beasting for all time, but the staff die? Goddamn, that's a stiff price to pay for not intervening in a kid's abusive upbringing. Movie forgot about the last time a petal fell when there was a minor earthquake in the castle that the staff all recognized. Drink. Thank you. Agatha. Agatha makes a rare appearance here to ex machina Maurice's situation and remind us that she's a character that will likely do the same to the whole movie by the end of it. Are you making jokes now? So has Belle just put away all thoughts of escape, even though she was easily able to do it before? Even if she wants to help and get the staff back to normal, she's still dicking around in the library and starting a bestial romance instead of doing anything that would be helpful. But he was mean, he was coarse and unrefined. But that was way back yesterday, so I'm sure he's worked all his sh out. Wait and see a few days more. Yeah, who knows? With this pace, Bill may be pregnant by then. Another little gift from the Enchantress. A book that truly allows you to escape. What the f***ing f***? The Enchantress stopped by after cursing the f*** out of these folks and dropped off a gift? It was her cruelest trick of all. You know, except for cursing the hell out of hundreds of innocent people. A magical book that allows you to go directly to certain places is totally different than a boot, or a Triwizard Cup, or a statue head, or anything else that rhymes with short peat. This is the Paris of my childhood. Movie throws yet another unnecessary song at us that you probably won't remember within five seconds of watching this movie. What happened to your mother? It was the one story Papa could never bring himself to tell. Any better than to ask. F***ing what? You don't know what happened to your mother because your dad appeared too choked up about it to tell the story? And for that reason, you never were compelled to ask or demand to hear it? Works for the screenplay, but it makes no f***ing sense. Plague. You must leave. Now. Disney says, f*** your kids' childhoods, we're gonna go all plague on their asses. I'm sorry I ever called your father a thief. So, bygones then? 
Bell can go back to Maurice and not be a prisoner for the rest of eternity? Gaston, did you try to kill Maurice? Last night, everyone was calling Maurice crazy, but now he comes in and impugns the most famous person in the town and everyone believes him, even a little? She is the one. Main character is the one, cliche. Instead of a date, Beast and Belle agree to get dressed up and have a good old-fashioned staring contest. The animated version has much more amazing camera work and movie magic than this retread, but this does have 97% more move busting. Why can't the coat rack talk? Some of the staff members were turned into mute versions and some weren't. So does that mean the Enchantress went through them one by one? Now go. Our time is almost past. I was the one who had it all. Beast spends what he thinks are his final moments ratcheting up yet another forgettable addition to the soundtrack. Damn, they still have Maurice at the bar? He was accosted by Gaston's goons way back before the Beast even took a bath. Then he and Belle got all dressed up, danced to discount Peebo Bryson, had their talk, mirrored, broke up, and Beast had time to sing an unnecessary song. Stop! From the brief close-up look of Maurice in the mirror that showed him struggling, Belle was not only able to glean his exact location, but timed her entrance to perfectly intercept the asylum wagon. The monster has her under his spell! If I didn't know better, I'd say she even cared for him! This is a ridiculous assumption to make on Gaston's part. I know he's a sandy butthole, but he's still trying to get with Belle, right? So why throw her under the bus in front of the whole f***ing town? Kill the beast! Everyone's all bloodlusty and all, but no one has a clue about where the castle is. Even if the mirror shows the castle itself, it doesn't show the route. Also, isn't Maurice vindicated now? No one's saying he's under the beast's spell, so why does he have to stay locked up in the cart? If there's one thing this town does exceptionally well, it's mobilize an angry mob. They got ready for this beast hunt like a NASCAR pit crew. As the movie progresses, the time to get between the village and the castle is shrinking. It took more than half a day for Maurice to get out there in the first place, but by this point, the villagers can make it back to that in less than a song, on foot. I know what happened to Mammal. Even though the castle is under attack, we've still got time for some backstory bullshit about Belle's mom. Sorry, old friend. It's hero time. Instead of continuing to attack Gaston, the castle staff lets him wittily quip all over the floor. You know, it's shocking how Pirates of the Caribbean this thing ends up feeling. The castle begins crumbling like the boss level of some Super Mario game for no other reason besides adding suspense. The movie was definitely going for the record of most edits within a rooftop jumping sequence, but unfortunately still came up short to Captain America Civil War. Stay there! I'm coming! Beast gets a little presumptuous about how this night's gonna end. It was an honor to serve with you. The honor was mine. Main characters are fully objectified in the order of their cast billing, because we need to see the first of many curtain calls in this f***ing movie. I love you. Luckily, Belle waited until the Agatha Enchantress was within earshot to express her love for the Beast. I mean, if you're a magical entity whose curse set the plot in motion, then showed up right at the last minute to right all the wrongs in dramatic fashion, that's the ultimate ex machina, right? Yeah. Gandalf and Obi-Wan share a brief moment before heading off to fight Voldemort. So there, now don't ever be a dick again, or I'll curse the entire country, motherfucker. Lumiere, look. Damn, the prince looks like he's totally ready to chill down at the beach and knock back some sick cold ones, bro. How would you feel about growing a beard? <laughs> oh, f you, movie. It takes almost four minutes for movie to complete the task of sucking its own d He taxed the village to fill his castle with the most beautiful people. The beautiful people, the beautiful people, the beautiful people, the beautiful people. Look at her, LeFou. My future wife. He's a peeping Tom. And she's the only girl that gives me that sense of... Mm. I don't know what. I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed. Or worse, expelled. Give her a dashing debonair smile. Come, come, show me the smile. Show me that smile again. Run, big, run for your life, get some help! I'm feeling it in your heart. You are the wildest, most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. I'm standing with the man in the mirror. Who are you? Who are you? I really want to know. Look at me. Look at me!